Hey, hey, besties and bosses, happy Tuesday. How's everyone doing? How's everyone's weekend? I know for those of you in the US, some of you had a long weekend, some of you didn't. You'll have to let me know. I think some people are feeling very anti-patriotic. We're not celebrating, no, some people were. You'll have to let us know if you were taking time off, if you weren't, and if you're outside the US, if you're enjoying summer, if you're taking a break, if you're not. Not what our conversation is about today, though I am gonna bring up a vacation analogy, so worth speaking to. You know, for me, we had a really lovely weekend. I took a half day yesterday and kind of had a call and some light work and then some time with my husband over the weekend we saw some friends had a really great meal enjoyed being outside some really good wine conversation and one of the conversations we had is actually what we're gonna be talking about today uh, the economy has been coming up I think for so many people clients have been asking me about the economy depending on where you get your news depending on what news source we check um, as of we just started the new quarters. As of a couple days ago, some places are saying we're officially in a recession. Some places are saying we're not. Some places are saying we're about to be in one. So, you know, kind of depends on where you're reading. But either way, the, I think, economy is something we're generally paying attention to at any given time as business owners, as people making money, especially if you're looking to also build wealth and to invest in different ways. I think it's something we're usually having, you know, having a pulse on. And I think whether or not we're officially in a recession, Many people have been speaking to you know inflation, prices for gas, groceries, things are going up. I think that is very real. That is not a made up thing. Inflation is happening. We're we're really seeing that right now, um, and we're in a okay. I always get this wrong. We're in a bear market. That's me figuring out which way we're going. Um, we're in a bear market in terms of the stock market. So I think all of these things are creating question marks for people, concerns for people. I've had some clients ask about this one of our friends was asking me my perspective on this so i wanted to bring today a conversation around my thoughts on the economy and really looking at how you can make money in any economy i want to break down something that i think is really important to understand whether we're in a recession or not but to understand about what it means if we are because i think the challenge with something like a term a label recession is it tends to really freak people out and what we make it mean can really cause a lot of scarcity thinking a lot of fear thinking and really cause people to make decisions in their business from a place of fear that really aren't serving to them and i really want to help neutralize that and help you understand what it actually means if we are in a recession it's not as scary as it seems and then I wanted to walk you through my coaching framework clarity mindset strategy and action we're going to talk through a few pieces there to really help you navigate this economy and any economy everything we talk about today really is relevant always I think this is just actually a great opportunity for us to revisit some of these things and see how they're particularly true for us given the current economy so you can navigate this so you can really continue to make money sustain to grow one of the things I said in the email I sent out that's really, I think, important before we dive into this to preface with is, well, first and foremost, like, why do I feel like I can talk to you about this? I successfully moved through two recessions already in my life. 2008, we were in a recession. I was actually waiting tables at that time and in the acting industry, which like kind of shut down. And I came out um, financially really prosperous during that time partially because of my mindset and some of the things we're gonna talk about today. We had a mini recession in 2020, um, I think around Omicron time. Um, successfully navigated that, profited in my business, supported my clients through that. COVID, I don't think was a, technically a recession, but I think a lot of what we're gonna talk about today really mimics some of the fear and some of the concerns we had during COVID and successfully myself navigated that. My business doubled during that time. All of my clients during that time either maintained or increased their income. So just in terms of, I've written this, the economy wave in multiple ways, whatever we label it, both myself and with clients. So I do feel like I can really speak to, to this from my perspective and really want to speak to this, particularly from the clarity mindset strategy and action perspective. And one of the things I talk so much about is the importance of managing your mind to manage your business, to manage your, your personal and financial, um, your small economy. And then I also really want to preface this with all that being said, I am not an economist. I am not a financial advisor. I am not a financial planner. Please don't take any of this as financial advice. Please don't come to me for financial advice. That is not my expertise. Legally, I don't even think I'm allowed to give you financial advice. So really, I just want to give you some perspectives and some things to think about and the way I'm thinking about this and some tools you can have in your tool belt um, for a way to be able to manage this. But just again, just to really give that disclaimer, hey, I'm nice to have you here. I'm not a financial planner or advisor, so this is not financial advice, but absolutely 
a perspective and absolutely some things you can think about, things that have really supported me financially to profit, to come out ahead and my clients as well. So from a clarity perspective, the first thing I wanted to bring here, just to really help everyone understand, so your brain does not spin out, it's kind of two things. One of the biggest challenge in any economy for people in terms of managing their business to manage their finance or managing their mind to manage their business to manage their finances. And one of the things that I think really has people make poor decisions instead of strategic decisions and really has people miss out on opportunities and really sabotage their business is letting fear be the dictator of their decisions instead of being able to get to a neutral place to be able to make clear and strategic decisions. And I would, I would say fear is the biggest killer for your financial success, for your wealth in any economy. Now, fear is human. This live stream is not about how do you not have fear? If we are in a recession, how do you like, how do you become inhuman and pretend you don't have fear? That is called bypassing. That is not what I'm talking about at all. But I think we want to be really aware of how when we operate from fear, and just to like geek out on the brain a little bit, when you are in fear, when you're in fight, flight, freeze, or bond, we are literally in a different part of our brain. It is the reptilian part of our brain that does cause us to fight, flight, freeze, or bond. We are not in the prefrontal cortex, the executive functioning part of your brain that is really needed to be able to make clear, neutral, strategic decisions that move you forward, which means, what we're gonna talk about now, I wanna talk about why this is such a scary thing, but it's really important to understand because a lot of times when we are in a recession or when there is inflation or when there is anything that feels more in scarcity, right? There's a lot of fear mongering in the news. There's a lot of things that really wanna kick up that fear center and it causes us to react instead of really to strategically respond. And that more than anything will create a self-fulfilling prophecy for you in your business and with your finances. I wanna read these comments and then I'm going to, um, dive into what I want to share with you. Um, hi, Rana. So, hey, it's Rana says, I've been following your content a lot lately, falling in love with your content. Thank you so much. Am I uh, pronouncing your name correctly? Is it Rana? Um, is that how I say that? Thank you so, so much. I really appreciate it appreciate that feedback. Julia says, hi, Kim. Curious to hear what you think about offering different services during these times or sticking with what we've got. I'm, accident, I'm absolutely going to get to that. Um, so remind me, because I'm going to talk about the strategy piece in a little bit. If I, I will come back to this, but if my brain forgets, um, remind me because I want to make sure I do, do speak to that. And I'm on my phone. So if you see that little fuzzy thing, that's my finger trying to scroll up on messages. Um, but on the clarity side of things, uh, yes, you got it in terms of the pronunciation. Awesome. Name, names are important. Names are important to get right. My mom is Dutch. Her name is Schalke. And growing up, her name always got butchered. So I'm very aware of trying my best to get people's names correct and to say them correctly because we heard all sorts of funny things growing up. Anyway, I digress. So I think that's really important to understand just in terms of being able to think strategically and what really is going to serve you financially to building a rich, wealthy life through your business in any economy. And what I wanna help you understand to help minimize the fear, whatever, whether we are in a recession or not, depending on who you read the news from, Either way, we have inflation, we're in a bear market. I think something that's really helpful to understand about a recession is that when, for, for it to be deemed a recession, for us to get that label, for the for economists to announce we are in a recession, what that all that means is that we have had two consecutive quarters of a lower um, GDP. Like we've just had two slightly slower um, quarters and in the economy. And with, I just did a little research before I live, what that means for us currently is I think we're down, it's like 1.6, 1.8%, maybe 2% in terms of, uh, what is it, GDP gross domestic product, is that right? Um, so we're down like 2%, that's enough to be deemed a recession. And so I want your brain to hear that. And I want your brain to know if, if economists say we are in a recession, by the time it is announced that we're in a recession, that means we already have been for two quarters, for six months, which means nothing has actually changed except for we have enough data to be able to announce that, that we're in this and it's not just sort of a blip on the radar, but it actually means at the time of announcing that, nothing has changed from the day before. Nothing has even changed from the month before. We're literally in the same exact place. And I say that to you because our brains tend to hear something like recession. First of all, most of us, I think, assume that means something far worse. We think it means there's a 50% dip and we're about to have a, a depression. It's gonna be the Great Depression all over again, or it's gonna be COVID all over again. I really want your brain to hear. All that means, if that is officially announced or if 
the news sources you read announce that. All that means is you are getting the information that's already been true for the last two quarters. Nothing has actually changed. This is where understanding and managing your mind is so important because otherwise, if your brain hears, this is mayhem, everything is horrible, that's when we create a self-fulfilling prophecy because we get into that fear center of our brain and we stop making really strategic, clear decisions from a neutral place. We start spinning out and doing kind of really wonky things in our businesses. So nothing has changed if that is labeled. I mean, in terms of it's the same exact thing it's been for the last month and the month before that and the month before that. And all that means is we have, it's like a 2% dip on average, right? So that doesn't mean like the economy is in the, like in the crapper, it means it's down 2%. The other couple things I think are really important to hear is to help neutralize the brain around this so it doesn't seem so freaky. Two other things, on average, I researched this, again, I'm not an economist, but there's lots of information on this. I find this stuff really fascinating. I find it really fascinating from a mindset and strategy perspective because during recessions, during any sort of challenge, any economic challenge, any life challenge, right? We see, we saw this during COVID. I saw this in my business. People were freaking out. My clients dug in, leaned in to support, managed their minds, showed up strategically. They literally maintain, or many of them grew. I doubled my revenue. Many of my clients blew up. And I share this to you because I think we think it has to be a horrible time, but we see if you can get what the facts actually are and manage your mind, this can be a time that your business can either maintain or really thrive and survive. A lot of people make their fortunes during recessions or during downtimes because there's more opportunities. Um, so the average recession is 11 months. We had a mini recession in 2020 that was only three months long. So if you had a business during 2020, you have already navigated a recession successfully. If we are in a recession now and an average recession is 11 months, what that means is we are already halfway through it. And so I want to reflect that to you because if your brain wants to spin out, it wants you to see if you've been okay this whole year, you're, you're, you're just fine. Everything is fine. You just have a little bit more information, a little bit more data about what's going on. And then I think the other helpful thing to understand about recession is this is normal in the economy. Recessions actually help reset the economy. So when we have high inflation like we do right now, a recession actually helps cool things and helps bring some of that back down. And this is where I said I was going to relate it to summer vacations. I kind of think of it almost like a summer vacation for our economy. It's just like a little summer vacation for the economy in which it allows some prices to stabilize. It's actually healthy long-term for our economy, just like for us as business owners, right? If we never take a vacation, if we never take a break, right, we're going to burn out. We actually need that reset time. And during that reset time, generally speaking, most of us aren't expecting our break vacation time to be our biggest month ever, but we absolutely expect to still maintain our business, to still maintain our income. Some of us might find when we're in that beautiful rest, relaxation, reset energy, we actually sell more and we make more money because that's the opportunity that happens when we actually allow ourselves to rest. That's kind of the same thing with a recession. So just to offer a very different frame here so your brain doesn't spin out and so that you don't unintentionally make decisions in your business that really don't serve you and really aren't um, congruent with what's actually going on. I think if we know this, we can see then how really you get to decide what this means for you in your business and with your own world. We all have, we're in a micro economy here in the online space. We have our own economy. We all get to decide what this means. This only has to rock us if we decide this is a horrible, awful thing and everyone spins the F out. Just like during COVID, right? We were in such a beautiful position in the online space. I mean, I lived in New York City in the height of COVID. I'm forever will be so sad for the lives we lost and how challenging that was. And then in terms of business in our economy, how lucky were we in the online space for those of us who really decided to see this as our own micro economy, right? For those people who decided to lean in when everyone else was freaking out, for those people who really decided how they wanted to show up and what they wanted the end of that time to be like, they really um, came out ahead. And I think we really saw that was a time our industry, our online space blew up. And I really see the same can be true for us now. And so just so everyone's brain hears this, hears this, I think we hear recession and think that has to be horrible. And I want you to hear this and see, well, wait a second, this is actually a good normal thing in the economy. This can help actually reset some of the inflation. And really this can be a time where actually our industry blows up that much more. Because if, if we're looking for a place to create our own economy and if that's kind of the um, temperature of the world, what a better place than being an entrepreneur in the online space. Um, 
Julie says, I have a bad connection here at the beach, so I may have to catch the replay later. Oh my gosh, uh, if you're at the beach, you should definitely enjoy the beach and catch the replay, but I'll make sure I circle back to, to your question. I won't, I won't forget. Um, hey, Yvonne, nice to see you here. So those are the pieces just on the clarity side of things that really feel important to speak to because I want you to see how much of this becomes then uh, not just having the clarity of what a recession really means. I think anytime something's going on in our world that spins us out, we all do ourselves such a service, such a gift to find out what something actually means, right? To get that clarity point and then seeing how this can really help you to cool your brain down, to cool that fear center because this becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy situation where you really get to decide what this means for you. And I, um, thanks for the smiley face. I remember, and then I'll move into the mindset and strategy piece here and action piece, but this, this feels actually really important. It's kind of a clarity mindset piece. I remember when COVID first hit in New York City, really making this conscious decision. I mean, look, none of us knew it. I just remember being here. We were in the epicenter. None of us knew what we know today of how things were going to end up. We just all had the fear mongering and the stress and the worry and all of the things. And I remember deciding this was going to be my time to show up and I was going to double down. I was going to lean in. And I really thought, what do I, what do I want to think at the end of this? How do I want to be at the end of this? What do I want to look back and be proud of myself for essentially? And I really did like drew a line in the sand inside. I was like, I'm going to be so proud of myself because I'm going to show up and serve my face off. And I am going to really decide that this gets to be a time where I get to come out of this ahead. And so that's how I showed up. That's what I want to offer to you here, just as a, like, hey, this is not doomsday. Again, if we are in fact in a recession, that means we already have been for six months. That means at most we've got five months left. And that means there's a not even 2% dip happening. It's, it's not the thing that we think it is. Um, and many economists are saying, it's it's different than past recessions and if anything we have um the opposite of a job shortage we have a employee shortage people like most a lot of companies aren't are having a hard time hiring anyway not to get into all the side details but whatever that is in any economy i think this is gets to be a place for everyone to reset and to remember the you get to decide how you want to view something how you want to show up what you want to make that mean what opportunity or not you want to see in something and so i offer that to everyone here from a mindset perspective whether or not we're in a recession in any economy that gets to be something you play with um okay so let's talk we're gonna talk mindset and then we'll talk strategy a little bit and how I'm thinking about this. It's just because I do think there's some things strategically we can think about as well. We already talked a little bit about the um, this piece here in terms of navigating the fear, but I would say from a mindset perspective, just the biggest thing to remember is that fear is a human response. None of us are devoid of fear. <laughs> like that is just a thing. But I think it's really helpful for us to notice when we're in fear, when we're in scarcity is a form of fear, right? Um, I think during um, during COVID, I was calling, what was I calling it? Fear city? I think I was calling it fear city. Fear and scarcity brought uh, mixed together. Um, and just to be really aware when you're in fear city, when you're in scarcity and see that that is your opportunity then to process your fear and to get to neutral. I talk about this with clients so much, the importance of being able to get to neutral. This does not mean Pollyanna. This does not mean get to even positive, really seeing how can you process your fear, being able to notice it and label it for what it is to catch your fear and to see, don't make yourself wrong. This is a human thing. And how can you process that and get to a neutral place? This is the best gift you can give yourself as a CEO to be able to manage your mind. Because if you can get to neutral, that is going to be the landscape you can run your business like a CEO from in any economy, especially right now. And that is the place we want to make all strategic decisions from. And so what I would offer you, since I'm not coaching everyone individually, is just to really notice and to be able to check in with, am I in fear? Am I in scarcity? Am I in fear city right now? If so, that's fine. I don't need to like fix this. I get to process this, but this is not a place I make business or financial decisions from, right? This is not a place I make your strategic strategic decision in my business. This also isn't a place I go and start messing with my finances. If we use the stock example, uh, stock market as an example, right? The, the market is dipping. We are in a bear market. 
Um, this is not the time, if you're in Fear City, that is not the time then to go decide, well, let me go pull a bunch of my cash out and a bunch of my stocks, or let me go invest a bunch of money into this random stock I heard about, right? Check in with what, what operating system is running right now. If it is fear or scarcity, that is not the place to mess with your money or to mess with your business, right? That is the place to check in, process, get yourself to neutral. And then from neutral, that is the place that is going to serve you strategically in your business and with your finances. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I think that is one of those places where we can create that self-fulfilling prophecy. And I really want to invite you to create the self-fulfilling prophecy that is decided that you are running from neutral and that gets to serve you, your business and your financial, your own personal economy, so to say. Um, just trying to see, I feel like there's so many so many things here um, on the mindset side of things, but I wanna make sure I get to the strategy piece. The um, other piece I will just speak to on that is then to keep coming back to what are the facts and what are the story, uh, and what's the story you're telling yourself. This is one of my favorite tools that I use with my clients. Our brain loves to be a storyteller. It loves to tell lies, it loves to tell stories, it loves to make play make-believe. It is so darn creative. And so when fear is getting kicked up, when that fear city is getting kicked up, when there's a bunch of stuff in the news that is fear-mongering and telling you you need to worry, that is when your brain loves to get into story. And what I would invite you if you're thinking, okay, I don't know if this is fear or if I'm at neutral. And we know the goal here really is how can I get to neutral so I can really be the CEO who makes those clear neutral decisions strategically with my finances, with my business. A really other easy tool if we're not navigating and processing fear is to look at simply what's the story I'm telling myself and what are the facts here? Um, which is why I open this up with literally to tell you some of the facts about what a recession means, because I think it's so helpful to see those are the facts. The story might be, and this means everything is horrible and everything's gonna fall apart and no one's gonna buy anymore and people will only buy things if I make it super cheap and no one has any more money. And right, like that, that might be all the story, but the facts are actually, this is the same thing that's been going on for the last six months. It's only dropped 1.6 or 1.8%, whatever that is, less than 2%. This really isn't affecting our online space this much. A lot of people make a ton of money in during recessions, right? We can see like facts versus story, and that can be a really helpful thing. You can literally just get out a sheet of paper, write down facts, write down story, and really focus on the facts. And then with that story part, that's the piece you wanna let go of so you can get to neutral. And if you're going to tell yourself a story, that is where you get to decide what's the story you wanna tell yourself. I was talking about that decision I made at the beginning of COVID, the decision I'm inviting you to make now. I mean, at the end of the day, the decision I made myself, I didn't know if that was gonna be true or not. That's a story, who knows if that's true, but I chose a story that was going to be in service of helping me manage my mind, of helping me show up in the way I wanted to, and that's what I wanna to invite to you. So separate out your facts and your stories, and then any story that isn't serving you, let go of that. You can even sell, tell yourself the story I'm telling myself is, which can help create a little separation to help you get to neutral. And when you're at neutral, you get to choose the story that you wanna tell here. Hopefully that makes sense for y'all because I know I'm trying to almost like coach you through a live stream, but hopefully that tool makes sense. And remember really the goal here is how can I just keep getting back to neutral? How can I get out of that story and back to neutral? Okay, all right, all right. All right, we're gonna we're gonna jump to the, some of the strategy pieces I'm thinking about. So I think what's helpful here, I labeled this live stream "How to Make Money in Any Economy," and what you're going to see here is a lot of the strategy pieces we're talking about are true in any economy. And I think it's helpful to remember, business has not changed. People still have needs. People still have desires. People still need support, right? I think especially in our online space, where I really do think we have our own micro economy. Whatever it is you do, people are still going to need whatever it is you're selling, right? I still need my coach. I still need my team. I still need my groceries. I, like, I still need all of the things that I, I need. Um, that doesn't go out the window. And I think that's really helpful to remember. And everything we're going to be talking about today is, yes, true. If we are in a recession, some things to think about. But it's really true always in business and really true I think the thing we have to remember as business owners is our job is always to be open to listen to what's going on and able to adapt and pivot, right? When I think one of the things I noticed with my clients and what I noticed during COVID, and I keep bringing that up because I just think there's so many parallels to obviously 
completely different situations but parallels just in terms of like the fear city our brain wants to get into that fear and scarcity and just the like worry we have about business and economy and people buying and how this is actually such an easier better time i think than what we saw when when covid hit because i had so many other layers of of hardship and challenge and complication and i mean so many pieces there not to go down a rabbit hole but we see we can see a lot of parallels there and what we what we really saw in our space is the business owners who saw okay my job is just 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 to open my ears to open my eyes to see what is going on how can i not be tone deaf how can i listen how can i adapt how can i pivot but still treat my business like a business those are the business owners who did just fine or double or triple their business and so I want to invite you to think about the same thing here. Um, one of the biggest things I saw be really supportive during COVID that I think is really supportive now with what we're talking about is just to really take a pause and to notice, okay, so if this is going on, if this is happening, if this is possibly affecting me and possibly affecting my audience, does my message need to change? Do, do I need to have a different conversation? How can I... If people are possibly in fear city, right? And they're having a harder time making decisions because they're not in the, I'm like so geeking out in the brain here, but what that basically means is we're not in the decision-making part of our brain. It is that much harder for us to make decisions. And it's probably that much harder for us to make decisions that are close to that thing we have fear and scarcity around, which is investments, right? Financial investments. If I know that's true, how can I just hit the pause button for a second and just to look at what content am I putting out? What messaging am I putting out there? Is there anything I need to speak to? Is there anything I need to adjust? Not how do I change my whole business or how do I decide people can't buy this, but this is the same thing we would do always in business, right? If you had, um, if you were in the middle of a launch and people weren't buying, you'd want to get clear on, do I need to change my messaging? Or what's coming up for people? Why aren't they buying? Do I need to have a conversation around this? Right? We're always looking at how can we refine our messaging? How can we get clear on what's coming up for people? What's making it feel harder for them to make that buying decision? How can we make it that much more clear for someone as to how this is going to help them solve their problem and meet their needs and get their desires met? So I think that is a place where um, this is always true, but I think anytime we have heightened challenge, heightened fear, heightened um, emotions that take us out of that ability to make decision and people are feeling just maybe a little bit more grippy because they are in fear, we as business owners get to be the really neutral, calm, safe place for people and just really make sure we're communicating that through messaging, through content, through our sales conversations. Does that make sense? Um, and I think with that, it also means the more, and this is always true, this is not a like just now, this is always true, but the more clear and specific we can be, the more we can cut the noise, the more we can trim the fat from our messaging, from our offers, right? The easier it is for someone whose brain is maybe a little more stressed out, who's a little over, more overwhelmed, who is maybe a little bit more in fear for them to be able to understand what you're saying. So I know during COVID, one of the things I was super mindful of when I was coaching my clients, where I was like to get really narrowed in on my messaging to make sure I didn't have too many, because you know, we do more than one thing um, in my business and terms of what I support people with, but just to get a little more drilled in. So it was just that much more clear and specific and easy for people to understand. And I think that's kind of the same thing we're playing with now. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and as always, thinking about, this is always the case in any economy, thinking about what, how can I meet my people where they're at? What is going on in my audience's mind? Are they having objections? Are they having worries? Are they excited? You know, like, do they see this as an opportunity? Are they new to the business space? And they're like, you know what? This is the best time. Like, screw the nine to five world. This is the best time to start my own business and make my own economy. Maybe, that, I don't know for sure, but maybe if you... I have a client who coaches virtual assistants. Um, maybe for her, for example, and I don't know if this is true, just making this up as an example, it might be that now more than ever, people are like, well, I'm gonna make my own economy. I'm going to be in charge of my own money. Now is the best time. I wanna look where I can invest to be able to make money for myself, right? That's but that would be really helpful to know because and that's the thing we want to be able to double down on and speak to in her messaging, for example, using her as an example. So hopefully that makes sense for all of you here. This is always true with your messaging, with your sales, but just seeing how can you just be that much more clear and specific right now is I think going to be really beneficial. Um, one of the um, 
the things with that, I think just being really helpful to think about is just getting clear on and is there anything I need to adjust? There might not be, right? This does not mean everyone's got to pivot. Everyone's got to adjust their offer. But I think just looking at if I'm meeting people where they're at, just getting clear on what are people's biggest needs right now. That's what we're always <laughs> as business owners, right? What do people need from me right now? What does my audience need? What do my people need? Um, what are their challenges? What are their pain points? What is my solution to that? Is there anything I need to adjust with what I'm currently speaking to or what I'm currently offering? So Julie, I think this is a little bit to what you were asking in terms of um, just pulling your question back up, um, offering different services during these times or sticking to what we got. I think this is kind of that place where it's like, it depends on what everyone is offering, but I think it just is putting on that thinking cap of um, what is the biggest need for my people right now and just seeing, is there anything I need to adjust? And if so, how, like, if that is the case, then that might be a place where we want to offer something that makes sense for people um, that's really meeting them where they're at, but that's, that would be the case in any economy. So I would say, I'm trying to think, be mindful of how I want to say this. What I would say is let's not make a blanket statement for everyone that just because the economy has dipped a couple percent that everyone needs to change their offer and offer something really different. And I'll use myself as an example. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm not suddenly gonna change my offer. I'm not suddenly lowering my prices. I think, honestly, I think I'm one of the most affordable coaches at my level with my experience that anyone could work with. Um, I'm not suddenly going to change that. I'm not suddenly going to change my offer. I think if anything, what I have to offer is even more valuable right now. I think having support to manage your mind, to be able to make clear strategic decisions in your business, to be able to show up, to ride all those fear waves, I think that's always valuable. I think right now it's even more valuable. So just Julia to kind of offer, to speak to what you're speaking to. So in my case, I'm not gonna change that offer at all. However, if um, I'm trying to use, if I use that client as an example with uh, who supports virtual assistants, maybe for her, right? She might she might decide that there's a way to meet um, new people coming into the industry. If she's been working with people who have always been in the online space, maybe for her, she's seeing like, oh my gosh, there's this whole influx of um, muggles who are coming to the online world. Maybe it makes sense for me to create an offer that meets those people where they're at. It's an intensive or something like that. That's a little bit more. Um, like a next easy next step for for those people. Um, so hopefully, Julia, that makes sense for for your question. What I do think is helpful for everyone that I've really been thinking about is um, depending on what the availability is in everyone's businesses. Just seeing um, so a couple of things. I think one, just being really, like we talked about this in COVID. This is not the time, in my opinion, to go discounting all of your things and having a race to the bottom. In general, I see that is when the fear, the scarcity is getting kicked in and we start creating a story that people can't afford things, that people can't buy things. And that is when people start slashing their prices, not for strategic reasons, but because they think people can't afford something, right? That is when we, um, most of us are not needing to make a correction for inflation. I think most people that I'm working with, if anything, um, aren't charging appropriately in terms of they're not asking enough for their services. So I think just being really mindful, especially since we have our own micro economy here in the online space, I think we also want to protect our micro economy and not weaken it and not water it down by everyone freaking out and suddenly slashing their prices to the bottom. All that does is then it becomes a race to the bottom whenever we're doing that. And it's sort of like whoever can lower their prices, whoever can afford to have the cheapest price wins. That like only works if you're selling like stuff from Alibaba on Amazon or something. But with our services in our industry, that's a really great way to, to weaken our industry, I think, and to weaken our online economy that I think is actually really strong and thriving right now. And so I would just, that's my personal perspective. Everyone can take it or leave it. But I really think it's, um, if anything, it's a time for all of us to really hold the value of our work and to really remember that it's, if anything, probably more valuable and to think more in terms of how can we be that much more clear and specific in our messaging to why it's valuable right? Instead of trying to discount everything because we're all operating from fear. However, I think what we can play with is looking at if I have a very, I, even though I think I'm very affordable for what I do or one of the um, least expensive, I guess, coaches in, because I use the revenue share um, in my space or in my, with my expertise, 
I think I still have a high ticket offer. I can still think through the lens of, right, but how can I also create some um, support, see this as an opportunity to be innovative or to have new ways to meet people where they're at who might not be ready for my coaching services, which is helpful for me to think about anyway because we've been fully booked for years, right? And to see that as an opportunity that maybe there is something that I can offer that is going to support people kind of to ride that wave. We have uh, my sales course sellout without feeling like a sellout. We, by the way, just officially turned this into it is available. You can get instant access. It's KimMarketSinger.com backslash sell dash out. And instead of charging $2,000 for that, which we usually easily could, I'm offering that at $99 because that to me feels like a really easy way that I can meet people where they're at. I'm not discounting it. It was free before. We're now offering this at a small price tag so that people can have some skin in the game to get results from it. But I'm seeing this as an opportunity to really be of service and an opportunity to give back to my community and to support people through this phase. And I also know it doesn't really affect, um, it doesn't discount my coaching services. It doesn't have me knock down the prices of my work. It just allows me to meet people where they're at, maybe when um, they feel like coaching isn't accessible to them or we don't have availability on my roster. So Julie, I hope that, I hope that, um, that answers that for you. And then I guess the other kind of piece here, strategically speaking to Julia's question, I think where everyone here has an opportunity is seen. And is there something new I might want to offer people? Because I know there's just a slightly different need right now. For example, I might offer, we offer coaching intensives, but I might decide, oh, I want to open open up some more coaching intensives because that's just a really great way for me to not discount my services, to not water down our industry and our economy within this industry, but to be able to meet people where they're at and give them support, to offer support at a more accessible rate without discounting anything. We offer those anyway, but I might, for example, want to offer more of those or offer an in-person VIP day that's a little bit more accessible than my ongoing coaching. And I think there are plenty of people who during this time are going to get super creative, super innovative and come up with a slightly new offer where they can meet people where they're at to really meet their needs to solve their problems. And that will create a new offer without discounting, watering down their, their current offers. So Julie, I hope that, I don't know if you're, um, if that makes sense. Um, oh, Yvonne, I just saw you said, LOL, not Alibaba, um, add value, don't discount. Exactly. So I think seeing how Yes, I think for everyone, stay focused on your core offers. If that is still meeting your audience's need, don't think this is a time to discount. We can always incentivize, right? But incentives are, this is almost like a whole nother live stream, but incentives are very different than discounts. Incentives are a strategic marketing tool you use to help someone make a decision to invest through your services, right? If I am selling a course, And I know humans suck at making decisions because we all do. Our brains do not like any sort of discomfort. Decision making uses calories. The brain does not like to do that, literally. And so we are really bad at making decisions. So if I know this, I can strategically offer an incentive, like an early bird discount, to help people make that decision. That is different than discounting. I always think incentivization is strategic and it helps people make a decision and it helps meet people where they're at. And Sometimes it adds value, right? If we're giving a bonus, discounting tends to be a decision we make based on out of fear or scarcity and freaking the F out or trying to like race to the bottom or thinking people won't pay us. Um, so just seeing that difference might help people people here. Um, Yvonne says it's all about perspective, many offers. Yeah, exactly. And I think it, it'll be interesting. I think for everyone too, um, the way I'm kind of thinking in my mind is I think many offers is a great way to think about it, Yvonne. Like this is just... Um, I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly because I know we had a we had a chat. Um, but I think mini offers is such a great thing where it's like, how can I pluck something out of what I'm already doing and maybe make something that's more accessible that I can really help people right now that really meets that need, but it's not discounting, right? And this is just a great time for all of us just to just to see what those opportunities are. But that's always smart strategy, right? That was always a part of a customer journey in any economy is seeing how can I meet people where they're at? Is there something I can pluck from my offer that meets people as the next step in the relationship or so that we're continuing to build that customer journey, right? That is, that is every business model of business strategy that anyone has ever seen. That's what we're always looking at doing, right? I do a free live stream here. The next step I might offer is a smaller paid offer, right? Like we're always building uh, that, we could call it a funnel, we could call it a customer journey. That's always true. So I think just for everyone to see that nothing changes right now. I think it's just an opportunity for all of us to revisit some of these things that maybe we've forgotten about or maybe we've just been, we've had COVID rain or we've just been riding, coasting on certain things or it's just 
it's always great to reassess and to do an audit in our business that maybe we've just forgotten about um, and haven't paid as much attention to. Okay, got more to say here. Ask me questions though, if you have questions, um, because I wanna make sure I'm, I'm speaking to the things that um, people have questions around. And Julia, when you watch on the replay, I think, I hope you're at the beach. Uh, let me know if that answered your question. One of the other things I'm really thinking about strategically, and this also kind of goes with the action side of things, it's a little bit of both, um, is really looking at and taking the mindset of where everybody else is leaning out, I want to lean in and double down. So, um, I'm going to talk about this actually through, I think the stock market is just kind of a helpful frame so we can take it out of business for a moment. It still really speaks to the economy side of things. And again, I am not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. I am not an economist. Please do not take financial advice from me. This is simply my perspective and the way I'm thinking about things and what has served me. Take, you know, take what resonates here, but it, I, I'm not legally allowed to give financial advice. It feels very important to keep saying. Um, but I think about things like the stock market, right? And I'm looking at this and I watch this and I see everyone is, not everyone, a lot of people are in fear city. A lot of people are freaking the F out. What are they doing? They are leaning out. They are taking their money out right? What I see is when everybody else is leaning out, that is an opportunity for me to lean in. Wherever they're leaning out, that means they are lowering the price. They are making everything on sale for me. They are discounting all of those stocks that maybe I previously couldn't afford or I couldn't afford as much of. So those are the opportunities my brain is seeing. Obviously not every single stock ever, but the ones I believe in and the companies I believe in and I have a couple that I think are particularly um, great to watch right now, but I don't think that makes sense in terms of giving advice. Um, I feel like that's kind of like veers into the advice giving lane, but there's you know a couple things I'm really particularly watching that are that are super low right now. This kind of goes to everything we've been talking about, but I know this is what happens when people are in fear and freaking out. I know if I can keep my fear in check and if I can manage my mind, then I can really look clearly and neutrally and to see where people are leaning out. That honestly is probably the time I want to lean in and double down because I know that's going to turn around, right? This is 11 months max, right? On average, historically, that's what we've seen. That is going to self-correct, that is going to turn around. If I double down, if I lean in where everyone else is leaning out, I'm only going to come out ahead at the end of the 11 months. I just have to be able to manage my mind and to be able to think clearly and strategically. The same is true for us in business, where everybody else is leaning out, right? Where everybody else is freaking out thinking, you can't make money in your business, I'm gonna tap out. You shouldn't be selling right now, I'm gonna tap out. You should be discounting, right? Where everybody else is kind of leaning out. That is the opportunity I see for all of us to double down and lean in. Um, Yvonne says, I'm restructuring right now. Um, opportunity, yes, and exactly, seeing it as an opportunity. And I, I recorded a podcast about this yesterday. It's slightly different, like, lens coming out in a few weeks, slightly different angle. But one of the things I said um, that I think is helpful for everyone to hear is, Seeing opportunity is different than being opportunistic, and that feels so important. I feel like I literally said that during COVID. We were doing a lot of live streams then, and so I want to say that for everyone here because I know everyone here is so service-driven and so heart-centered. Seeing opportunity is different than being opportunistic, and I think what we get to really see from a mindset perspective, from a strategic perspective, from where we're taking action is that whenever there is challenge, whenever there is a recession, whenever there is something going on in the world where other people are freaking out, where other people are leaning out, right? Where other people are in fear and in scarcity, where some people see this is doomsday, other people see opportunity. And this is not to be opportunistic, right? If we think of COVID as an example, being opportunistic would be people are in harm's need and couldn't get masks. And so I'm going to sell them for a million dollars a piece. Seeing an opportunity would be people really need masks and need help. I'm going to start selling masks at a normal rate and make them available for people because I have a contact. I know someone who did this. Um, they made a ton of great money, right? Like because I have a contact or I'm able to sew them at home and make them so I'm gonna sell them online, right? That's the difference between um, opportunity and opportunistic. Um, so kind of the same thing here. And I think that's what we really get to play with. Where is everybody else leaning out that you get to lean in? Because that is, I think, where this gets to be something where it's like there really is opportunity. I um, listened to Chris Harder's podcast for the love of money, which is actually great because he does. He's talked a lot about the recession, and he got my brain doing some of the research rabbit holes and um, taught me some great things here to give. I always love to say to give credit where credit is due. But he was um, one of the ways he was phrasing this or framing this that I thought was really helpful as a way to think about it 
is sort of relating it to workouts and um he was relating it to weightlifting but i think about it in terms of like anyone else like the peloton in a spin class right where some people see a sprint or a hill as a place to lean out to check out it's like oh my god this is gonna suck and be so grueling i see that as an opportunity to lean in because i know that's the place that gets me fitter that's the place that gets me stronger those sprints expand my lung capacity those hills make me stronger they're short they're a quick little thing of i can lean in during the spin during the hill Right? I'm going to come out miles ahead of all the people who leaned out and like were like, Ugh, I can't do this. But I'm also going to be stronger and faster on the other side because of it. That's what I see right now for all of us in our online space. And honestly, I think we are in such a beautiful position because we do have our own micro economy here, which is in many ways very different than what is going on kind of outside of the online space. Um, he says he has exhibit A, Pharma Bro. Pharma Bro, yes, exactly. Um, and exhibit B um, is Mark Cuban's new pharmaceutical company, right? That's opportunity and so heart centered. I'm sure he is still making a profit from that. And such a beautiful way to see there's an opportunity here and an opportunity to do good and to profit. Um, I, 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 I like. I think there's so many, that's a, it's a whole nother live stream. So many good things there. Um, but I'm going to try to keep us, keep us focused here. So that on, and that's a little bit of the, um, both the way I'm seeing the strategy and the action side. And so what I mean by that is literally looking at where are the places either you feel the fear and urge to tap out and to lean out or where you're seeing other people lean out and really see that as strategically probably evidence to lean in. You can look at investments that way. Most of us in the online space really are most business owners, right? We don't have a capped income. Most of us have the opportunity to make income that, right, isn't the same as if you work in a nine to five that isn't salaried. I actually think, I think things like COVID and things like recessions actually show us how much safer being a business owner is and how much more control we have over our revenue. So many people are actually in the place where this was, I said, we were talking about the surprising opportunity. I think to see there's a surprising opportunity here where if you have a little bit of overflow, this is probably a time to lean into those investments and where you can make those investments. Um, and really seeing what those places are. And so strategically, that might be, yes, literally in the stock market or in those financial investments, right? Like I see that as an opportunity, but I also see it everywhere else. Where is everyone else probably leaning out? Being of service. Where is else probably everyone else probably leaning out because they're freaking out? Investing in support, um, doubling down on their marketing, doubling down on selling, doubling down on making offers, right? That's probably where people are freaking out and leaning back. And I just see that as, well, that means this is my opportunity to really leverage whatever asset resources I have to double down to lean in. So literally, like for me, I'm still working with my coach. I'm like, this is just an opportunity for me to really leverage, to lean in and get the support to manage my mind so that I can really see this as an opportunity time for me. Um, this is a time I can really lean into my marketing. This is a time I can really lean into making sure my team, it, I'm paying them and that they're supporting me and that I'm investing in them, right? Because if we can, if my team can then lean in and I can lean in, right? We can be a business that ha businesses boom during times like this or they don't, right? We can be one of those businesses. Um, Yvonne says, love what Cuban has done. Oh my gosh, right. Like just, so many, so many things. If everyone doesn't know what, I'm, I'm sure most people watching or on the replay know, but um, kind of side note, so everyone's not just like, what are, what are you all geeking out about? Mark Cuban um, started a pharmaceutical company where essentially he is doing so much good for our, our pharmaceuticals in the US are so expensive and they're so, um, it's just kind of like, people can just charge whatever the F they want because people need them. He has basically gotten everything, made it generic. And I think it's all, is it less than 39 or $49? Whatever it is you need, you can get it through his pharmaceutical company at like a set price. So something that used to be $497 or like, I don't know, my mom has migraine medication that she wasn't able to get because it's like so wildly expensive through this company. It's now like a set rate. It is all made generic. It is super accessible, I think just all the brilliant. There's so many things. It's so innovative. I think it's so disruptive. I think Mark Cuban is also a brilliant business person and a marketer. There's so many great things there. I'm curious to see um, what else he has up his sleeve. Anyway, just so everyone knows what, what the heck we're talking about. Um, okay, there were, I just wanna make sure here because I think there was one more strategic piece I wanted to share with you and then one more action piece um, before, just so I don't 
lose my thoughts here because otherwise I'll just go off on tangents with you all all day long. Um, what's this team disruptor? Yes, um, right there with you. And I actually, that's just kind of with our conversation. I think that's so great for everyone to hear as an example because I think that's the kind of opportunity we all have right now is if we can really manage our minds to manage our business, to manage our personal economy, to manage, to get to neutral, to be able to make strategic decisions, this gets to be a time if we all see it as a time for opportunity to disrupt, to like make new opportunities, to create something new and innovative that hasn't been done before. But for that to happen for everyone here, we have to really be able to manage our mind and not spin out around the fear. That's when we do, I don't want to say stupid decisions, but that's just when we make really reactive decisions is maybe the better way to say it, as opposed to really getting clear and grounded and responsive. Um, there's so many opportunities there. I, I, I will use myself as an example because I think I did a great job of this during COVID. That's when we created that sales course for free. I think that was such a, I'm gonna like do that for myself. I know it sounds like that, but just as an example, um, I, don't, I don't know anyone who's, who gave away a free six week sales course. Um, I don't, I feel like everyone's like, that's the stupidest, craziest thing to do ever. But I thought that was a really great way to disrupt our industry. And it really served my audience. It really served so many people during a time when they need it, but it also really served me as a business owner because I, I grew my audience and I got really beautiful clients on the back end of that. So just to offer examples here, but I had to really be in a mindset of, I feel abundant. I feel like this is an opportunity to do something different. This is an opportunity to be disruptive, right? I couldn't have done that if I was coming from a place of like, oh my God, everything is going to go to hell in a handbasket. I better charge a million dollars for this or, and everyone's telling me this is stupid and everyone's telling me this is gonna make me lose money because I definitely heard that from people, um, right? If I had been in that mindset, that could have never been a really beautiful disruptive opportunity. Um, all right, y'all get what I'm saying. Last two quick things here. Um, this is a bit mindset and strategy. I think what is really beautiful as an opportunity for everyone right now on the strategy side of things and in terms of the action you're taking, we've talked about this before, but I'm a really big believer in the 80-20 principle, which essentially says 80% of your results come from 20% of your output. And I think that is always true in any economy. And if you want to be able to make more money doing less, if you want to be able to grow and scale your business, being really clear on your 80-20 is so, so, so important. So much of what I'm talking to my clients about is, we might not call it 80-20 on a call, but it's looking at this because the more you grow in business, honestly, the more opportunities you notice, the more ideas you have, right? There's just so many things you could do and there's so many strategies that could work and it's almost like you know more and you could do more. And I find it's just easier and easier to have it become more like a 50-50 instead of an 80-20. And this is always something in any economy that's really helpful if you want to have profitability in your business and not just bring in revenue, but really be able to take home income to really look at the 80-20 driving your results, but also driving your, your profitability in your business. I think when we are in an economy like recession, whether it's deemed a recession or not, I think it's just such a great opportunity for all of us to remember this principle and to do a bit of a business audit and just to look at where can you trim the fat. Um, I, this is like such a weird example, but my dad raised cars for, um, for his whole life. And one of the things you're looking at when you're, whether you're driving, racing cars, you're racing bikes is the, the drag, right? Like if you want your, you want an aerodynamic vehicle to, to, because like those split seconds make a difference. Um, you know, you can win or lose a race based on, I don't know, like half a second or something like that. Anyone who's a bike rider understands, you know, how important uh, minimizing drag is. That's kind of what we're talking about here. And so what I would invite everyone to think about in terms of your strategies, instead of looking at, oh my gosh, we're in a recession. I need to freak out. I need to stop spending money. I need to cut all the costs. I need to just like freak out. I instead would look at, instead, where can you minimize the drag? What is your 80-20? How can you just refocus on the principles that always are smart in business? And the 80-20 principle is not saying cut spending. It is not saying um, start firing people on your team. It is not saying don't spend money. It's saying minimize the drag. It's saying cut the fluff. It's saying we all probably have an opportunity to look at and spending could be money. Spending could be time. Where are we not focused on our 80, 20? Where are we creating a lot of drag and wind resistance? That's making it harder for us to increase speed. And I think that's just always a great opportunity, but I think right now that can be a particularly great opportunity. You might even decide to spend more time, resources, energy, right? Where everyone else is leaning out, you might lean in, 
but you're going to have such bigger results if you lean in, if you double down time, money, resources into that 20% um, to get that 80% output versus into kind of all of the things. Um, Yvonne says, oh my God, cool, Go, goes faster with less effort. Exactly, exactly. So we want you know, an aerodynamic vehicle, right, that has less drag is going to go faster with less effort. When, um, when Peloton is the, the group of bikes, right, the, the reason bike riders ride together is they draft, right? So the, if you're, you could go faster with less effort if you're a few bikes, bikes behind, this is a strategy that in every sport we, we know about. Um, this is a strategy in business as well. We just sometimes forget that. And I think sometimes what we unintentionally do in business, especially when we're in fear and when we're in scarcity and when we're worried is we, we the pendulum swings. We either swing to the degree of, oh my gosh, Kim's saying cut the drag, cut the fat. That means cut spending, don't do anything, like freeze up, don't take, you know, like don't do all the things. And that's not at all what we're talking about. Or we swing the other way, which is do all the things, um, which is what creates the drag, right? Like let's add a bunch of extra things on. We wanna do is get right to the middle and see what is creating drag? What is the 20% that's creating the 80% results? This is true in any economy. And this is a great opportunity to lean into that, to double down in that when everybody else is probably leaning out into those other kind of extremes with the, the pendulum swing. Um, so, I find really great opportunity, right? To revisit some of these core business principles, these foundational principles that are true in any economy, that are gonna help you make money in any economy and simply a great time for all of us to be mindful of and to revisit some of those things and to really look at how we can then strategically make decisions that serve us. For some of you, that might mean not changing a whole lot. It might simply mean doubling down on your mindset work. It might mean simply doubling down on managing your thoughts managing your fear so you can show up neutrally. For some of you, it might mean revisiting your offer or changing your offer or changing your messaging, you know, pivoting something like that. It might mean um, making a change with um, like what you're focusing on with your strategy, but likely that was true already, right? Like that's probably not because it's a recession, you need to do those things. That was probably, this is probably just the opportunity for you to revisit or to visit some of those opportunities for you. And then for all of us, whatever the economy, I think just as a recap there is to remember, our job is always to be listening to our audience, right? The reason I brought this conversation to you today is because a client asked me and because a friend asked me this weekend, you know, like I'm, I'm hearing this enough from people. This was not a, this was actually a topic we slotted in. I had something else scheduled for today and then we kind of bumped all the topics out. Um, I slotted this in today, right? This is kind of exactly an example of what we're talking about in terms of pivoting, right? And this is still all my same messaging, right? Nothing I'm talking about is so all that different from what I usually talk about, except for I'm listening to my audience, I'm listening to my clients, I'm listening to what people are telling me. And so I'm just responding to that. But that's true for us always, always, always in business. So I just wanna keep reminding everyone, nothing really changes for us. It's just an opportunity for us to remember the things that are always true and just to keep listening to what are our people telling us. And to remember, we are all, I think what's so important as kind of like a final note is we're all in our own economy here. We have created our own microeconomy in the online space. And I think it's so important we also protect that economy, which means it's extra important that we all don't freak the F out, right? If we start freaking the F out, we create that self-fulfilling prophecy. We also all get to decide here. This doesn't have to rock us at all. If we all keep treating business like business as normal, our economy, our microeconomy here continues to thrive. Your personal economy and your business continues to thrive, right? If I don't freak out and tell my team, and they need to drop hours because something doomsday could be happening out in the future, right? They keep making money, they keep pouring back into the economy, right? If my clients keep acting like it's normal, all of the things keep acting the same. So um, I feel like I'm a little on a soapbox, but that feels like an important message for all of us to be, to be putting out there because we get to protect our own economy in that way. Um, okay, I did actually have one last thought. I said that was my last thought, but I had one last thought and note for for everyone here. This was on the strategy mindset side. I made myself a lot of notes. Um, this is something that I play with clients or that we play with um, and that I use myself. And it's really simple, but I think this can support you on the mindset and strategy side of things is if we are in a time where like there is going to be, um, you know, let's say this is a recession, we're down 2%, all of that. And it's stressing you out a little bit. I think a really easy thing, because we talk so much about fear, and if we're wanting to manage the fear, I think a really easy thing to check in with is simply what do you need to feel safe? 
what do you need to feel safe during this time? That might be support, right? That might mean financial resources. That might mean you have a buffer saved up. That might mean you start to save some money and put it into um, a side account so that you can kind of ride a wave, right? What do you need to feel safe? It could be a practical thing. It could be a mindset thing, but getting really clear on that um, and starting to put that into place because then you'll feel like you're tangibly doing something to create your own safety to help minimize that fear voice, right? I think fear gets kicked up extra loud when we feel like we don't have any control. And this is something you can have control over, literally identify what can you do to create more safety for yourself and then start to put that into place and just be very very mindful of um what's the note i made here um how much of what you're creating safety around how much of that is actual safety and then how much of is that you almost like creating um it's sort of like, you know how with boundaries, there's boundaries and then we start to put up a wall. We call it a boundary, but actually it's not a healthy boundary. It's just a big fucking wall. Kind of the same thing here. Notice what do you need to create safety? Put that into action so you can create, like feel that tangible action. But then notice where actually your safety is really scarcity and it's doing more harm than good. And it's you feeling uncomfortable and trying to minimize risk and almost like creating like a bunker around you. That isn't safety, that's called hiding right? That's actually a fear response. Fear is fight, flight, freeze, bond. So just be really mindful of that. Um, use this as a tool. What do I need to feel safe right now? How can I create that safety? How can I put that into action, right? That can be a really great mindset and strategy plan for you. And then just be super mindful of, am I creating safety or am I creating a bunker around myself? Um, a bunker is hiding. Um, safety is that place where it's like, I just got just enough here. But, um, and this will be the last thought I'll close on, remember, this is also a time of opportunity if we choose to see it that way. So we don't wanna create so much safety, right? That we're just hiding out and we're not leaning in when everyone else is leaning out to benefit from those opportunities. Because I promise those of you who decide to lean in when everyone else is leaning out, who decide to invest, whether that is your time, your resources, whether that's into the stock market or whether that is into your business or whether that's into a team member, whatever that might be, right? This is a time where everything's kind of on sale, right? It's like, there's a lot of people leading out when you can lean in. This is a time of ripe of so much opportunity for so many people where really I think a lot of riches and wealth are built and businesses can really boom. So create that safety, but we're really mindful of where that safety um, becomes that bunker that protects you from leaning into the opportunity. Okay. I love y'all so much. I hope this was helpful for everyone. If you have questions, pop this in here. If you want me to do some more lives on this, we have additional questions that are you know specific, pop that in the messages as well. We can always do a future live stream. I'll see kind of what questions I'm getting from clients as well because I wanna keep having the conversation. But I wanna remind everyone to, if you are catching this at the end, to go back to the beginning and just understand a little bit more about what's actually happening so that this doesn't freak you out. There really isn't anything to worry about here. Again, if we are in a recession, all of that means is we have the data and information and it's been announced, but it's the same thing that's been happening for the last two quarters. So I want everyone to really be able to leave this conversation seeing how they can really manage their mind to manage their business to manage their own personal economy and if any of you want support around this we are fully booked but we have i believe we have one spot opening up in august and then we're booking spots for september um, i have limited spots opening up and if you are interested in one of those and seeing how we can support you with the clarity mindset strategy in action with managing your mind to manage your business to manage your personal economy to be someone who sees the opportunity who leans in when everyone else is leaning out to be able to make more money on your terms that is what i do i'm really really good at it i would love to connect with you i'll drop a discovery call link for that and we'll get you slotted in for one of those upcoming spots as they become available and either way i love you all so much thank you for being here i'll be back next week with another live stream for you bye